Hi logical people, GKV here. In the last video, we talked about use ref hook. And with that video, we completed our hooks concept. In this video, we will learn about everything that is there to learn about components. So let's just do it. So the learning objective for this video are these four. We will learn what are components. Then we will learn how to design independent UIs using component. Then we will also learn how to reuse components. And at the end, we're going to talk about props and then specifically parent to child prop and child to parent prop. Okay, let's get started. So, what are components? As always, we will go to Google and look for what are components. Let's have a look. So I'm back to my Chrome browser. I'm going to open Google and I'm going to search for components in React. Components let you split the UI into independent, reusable pieces and think about each piece in isolation. Hmm. I think this is really nice explanation what a component means. And from my point of view, what it means is that you can actually create different sections of your component into different pieces and then you can reuse them as and when required. Brilliant. Now let's jump back to our VS Code and let's get our hands dirty. Okay, to get started for components, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called components because you know it makes sense to put all your components into one place so in your root directory just right click and say new folder and just call it components like that inside components i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it dominos.tsx The reason we are calling we are the reason I created a Domino's component is because we're gonna build a very simple Domino's pizza outlet. Okay. So before we jump into that, I just want to quickly highlight one thing. So if I go to pages and I go to index.tsx, what you see on the screen is actually a component so you have been working with components all the time you just did not know that it's called component um, with that knowledge let's go back to our Domino's Pizza and let's let's put a quick comment so this is Domino's Domino's if I can spell it Domino's Pizza outlet in our outlet we only either bake a pizza or we sell the pizza that's all we do we don't we don't take orders we don't take payments nothing we just bake pizza and sell pizza so let's write our very first component I'm gonna call it const dominoes equals to Return in maybe in H3. Hi, I am from Pizza Place. Pizza Outlet. And I'm going to give it a name. I'll say Logical Pizza Outlet. You know, because why not? And Let's export this because, of course, X React needs to know that how to find this. Export default Dominos. Beautiful. Now, how do we use this component? It's very simple. I'll go to index page, for example. Here, just the way we use HTML tags, we're going to use components. I'm going to say Dominos. And hopefully, and hopefully, VS Code will figure out where this component is. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to save it. In case Domin 
VS Code is not able to find your Domino's Pizza, you're going to import it like this. Okay. So let's go back to our local host and see what's happening. So it says, Hello world, and it says, Hi, I'm from Logical Pizza Outlet. Nice. So if we, if we quickly go back to our to our learning objectives, we say we wanted to learn what are what are components. So we just learned that this reusable piece of code, right, with its separate UI. Now there's another learning concept that we want to cover, which is components for independent UI. What this means is if I go back here and if I go to Domino's and I say you know what since we are not using any fancy styling i'm just going to use inline style i'll say sorry background as red if we go back to our browser you'll see that this component got the background of red and that's that's fundamentally about it right that's what component for independent ui means you can actually go and put whatever you like in your component and that UI or that style or that look and feel will never be shared with anyone else. It's only and only for that component. The third thing that we wanted to learn about components is about its usability, reusability. And what that means is that now since I've created this component, I can actually go here and maybe create another component, maybe another component like that. If you were Domino's Pizza, you would probably do franchises, and this is basically your franchise, and all of them are identical. And that's the beautiful part of components that you can reuse the same thing again and again. Perfect. I like it where it's going. The last learning objective was to learn about props. First, let's let's think about what is what is props. So I'm gonna remove all those. If I come back to Domino's, what props basically means basically means is arguments or parameters. Parameters to a function means props are just fancy way of saying parameters or arguments to a function now if you remember from one of our earlier videos that this part what i have highlighted just now is actually an anonymous function right so this is a function that has no name but is being referred by this constant variable since it's a function we can also pass arguments so i'm going to say props i mean honestly speaking you can call it anything you like you can you can say my props it, it doesn't matter but Props is a is an accepted nomenclature. When you do that, that means that the function or the component that is calling this. When you do that, that means that the function or the component that is calling this prop can actually pass some arguments. So I would say, for example, um, outlet name equals to logical copy this i'm gonna say mm. max now notice that this part to so the left part of the variable or the prop is up to you so this name can be anything you just need to make sure that whatever name you use here you just need to use the same name here to get that data Let's say props dot outlet name. Now this outlet name is actually coming from props. So you can actually go here and like you can say out name. The left hand side doesn't matter, but right hand side does matter. There's one more thing I would like to do is I would like to log this props so that you know uh, what you are receiving. Like how does it look actually? And to make it much more a bit more clear. I'm gonna pass another 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 prop. And I'm gonna call it 
is fancy equals to true. So if we go back to the browser and I refresh the page, you'll see that we log the prop and for the for the first instance of that component you got an object which says is fancy true and it says outlet name logical and for the second one it says outlet name maths now you must notice that for the second one we did not pass is fancy so basically this props is just a dictionary and you can get data out of it like this or you can also deconstruct it in one go you can say out name comma is fancy equals to props i'm gonna comment this and you can also do it this way so i'm gonna just log it out name and comma is fancy you say that you see that it says is fancy true outlet name logical and for the second one it says outlet name is math and since we are logging two things it says that it says that is fancy is not defined because for this component we did not pass that prop brilliant so with that understanding let's go back i'm going to delete this i'm going to use it this way because what i want to do is i want to say i want to delete this because i want to say is fancy equals to props dot is fancy and if this is not provided i'm going to say false this way i will make sure that i always have this variable it is never not defined okay beautiful now since we have these values and variables and props let's use them so i'm going to say copy this instead of hard coding this i'm going to do this so this is how you insert a variable into a text and let's see what we can do with it is fancy in a, in a while so if we go back now you see it says hi i'm from logical pizza outlet hi i'm from maths that's good right so wait i hope no one is feeling hungry because we have been talking a lot about pizza perfect now since we have our domino's pizza you would like to bake some pizzas and i'm pretty sure you know how to do that we're gonna create an internal state to to keep account of how many pizzas do we have. So I'll say I'll say um, pizza comma set um, pizza. This should be equal to use state. I'll say start with a zero, and that's how you import use state. VS Code does it automatically. If it does not do it, you have to do it this way. So every outlet starts with a zero pizza. So let's put it. Let's just display that. So I'm gonna say we have some pizza available. If you go back to a browser, a zero pizza. It also has zero pizza. What I would also like to do is I would like to just create a horizontal line so that we can differentiate between both of these. Beautiful. And now we are able to read the data. Now we would also like to do is we would like to, you know, bake some pizza light. Let's create a button. The type will be, of course, button. And we'll say bake. One, one pizza. Perfect. Obviously, it doesn't do anything because we did not tell it to do anything. So let's tell it to do something. Let's say const and bake pizza. That would be an anonymous function. And all we want to do is we want to change that variable. We'll say, and we will do that by using this. Set function provided by use state hook, and we'll say whatever the current pizza value is, please make it plus one. And we'll copy this, we'll bind this button, this function. So we'll say on click, 
please call this function please notice that we are not calling it this way when you do a parenthesis that when you want to execute this function here we don't want to execute the function we just want to provide the reference so that whenever the button is clicked uh, this function is executed and when this function is executed it will call this function which is set num pizza and when set num pizza is called it's going to update the value of num pizza variable which eventually is a state variable whenever a state variable changes react will re-render your component to the screen which means that this line will be updated and this line will be updated okay lot of theory let's see that in practice clear this we're going to say bake one pizza beautiful and bake one pizza as you can see that the state variable for this component and this component are independent they do not share the values with each other so as promised if we go back to our learning objectives we want to talk about props we did that and we wanted to talk about parent to child props we already did that because if you go back and pay attention this is a parent component which is calling a domino's pizza and domino's pizza is receiving props from its parent isn't that beautiful perfect i also want to send so that's okay let's save it here now let's see the last learning objective of this video which is child to parent prop and we're going to simulate that by creating another by creating another component so i'm going to go to my component folder right click create new i'll say l pizza tsx say const l pizza equals to now we know that component can receive props so we're going to use that knowledge time being we're going to just return i am from cell pizza and i will sell num of pizzas 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 whatever um so let's put a variable here sell num pizza copy this create this and we are expecting to receive this detail from props perfect um of course we need to export this so that react can find it beautiful coming back to the parent one now instead of creating a button we're going to create another com we're going to create another component inside a component and we call it cell pizza which should not come as a surprise to you because now you are a master of components and you know everything that there is to learn about components okay i forgot the name i have a memory of maybe worse than a goldfish i'm going to copy this this is the variable that we really want to send so we'll say equals to um, one so this cell pizza button or component can sell one pizza hopefully okay go back to our browser and we say okay i am from cell pizza i will sell one num pizza good i know i know i talk about that we will not do any styling but let's just put a break line you know so that it looks little bit okay perfect with that let's see how we can sell a pizza so i would like to post this as a challenge to you think about if this is your if this is your parent component that has num number of pizzas that it has already baked what does it mean to sell pizza and how would you sell pizza using using the sell pizza component i'm going to i'm going to wait here for a couple of seconds if you want you can pause the video and come back all right i'm back um if you are able to do it very nice i'm really proud of you and if you if you struggled there's no worry about it just follow along with the video and you will be fine okay so we want to reduce number of pizzas whenever something happened here 
so do something happen here let's create a button so that we can you know capture an event type as always with the button we'll say cell cell num is up right um i'm gonna remove this because why not i'm from cell pizza cell one pizza of course it doesn't do anything because we did not tell it to do anything and as you know when we want to tell a button to do something we always say on click handle cell pizza we have not created this function yet so let's do that so that react stops complaining about it right now this function doesn't do anything which is okay and all we want to do is we want to reduce this variable we want to update this variable and we have learned to update a state variable we always use the provided function now to your surprise or maybe not you can also pass a function reference as a prop and what this means is that i can go here in the child component i can say const props dot so now i have a function i have a function that can do something in our case an update num pizza on the parent and this function was provided to us by the parent so we can trust it trust it in a sense that it is it will do what it is supposed to be doing now it's extremely simple i'll copy this i'll come here i'll say here and hmm we are missing one piece of one piece of the puzzle which is we don't know what is the current number of pizzas um, our parent has no problem we can go here and we will send that as a prop as well coming back to the child we're just gonna get it from the props and now we can say minus one fingers crossed moment of truth let's refresh everything bake one pizza sell one pizza do you like it i love it same goes for this component with this we have completed all our learning objectives of this video we learned what are components these are basically separate piece of code that you write so that it can have an independent ui so that you can reuse them and to do all of this it take props as an input and the props can be sent from parent to child and from child to parent as well and technically you cannot send props from child to parent but you can talk to parent by using the props sent via parent to the child this might be confusing i'm going to repeat that one more time dominoes is our parent and we are calling this component and we are sending some props to cell pizza this is the first part where we send data from parent to child and you saw this already in index as well where we call the dominoes and we sent for example a couple of data now coming to the other part where how child can communicate to parent it is via props as well but child never sends any prop back to the parent component it only uses the props that are sent by the parent to the child and the interesting part is that we can also send so along with variables and constant we can also send function reference to the child and then child can call these functions and hence and hence you can update the state variables in the parent now the way we have designed our you know handle self is a little bit cumbersome right i mean 
from the parent we are sending number of visa we are also sending the function i think it is too much and maybe maybe the cell pizza component does a lot of things so for example before you know reducing this number it updates it updates the database maybe checks if user is logged in to cell pizza and things like that and to do that we created this separate component which makes sense but there might be the case that you probably want to sell pizza from the parent as well and to do that what i would do is i would say handle sell pizza i'm going to make it a little bit complex but bear with me you're going to you're going to love this handle sell pizza and i'm going to say num of pizza to sell and since we are in the parent component, I can say set numpizza as whatever numpizza is right now minus this variable. Okay. Now, whenever this function is called, it should be able to reduce the number of pizzas from our parent component. Now. We actually don't need these two. I'm gonna delete this, and we only need handle cell pizza p i z z a. It should be that. First, I misspelled it, so I'm gonna fix it. Now, if I go to cell pizza, I'm gonna copy this, and this prop should be this, and we don't need this. And here we just need to call this function. We literally don't have to do anything. So we will say we'll create an anonymous function and we will say call this function. Um let's say just self pizza because I have removed that prop and I don't want to rewrite it, but this should give you a gist. So we are saying that I am from cell pizza. On click of this button, I'm gonna call this function. This function is provided to us from the parent, and parent takes care of how many pizza do we want to sell. It takes a it takes a parameter, I'm gonna say one, so that we are able to reduce one pizza from num pizza. If we go back, clear everything, refresh, make one pizza, sell one pizza. Do you like it? I I love it. Beautiful. There's one more concept I would really like to emphasize here so that we have everything that we need to know. And that's I mean conceptually you know everything, but a couple of tips and tricks. If you remember, I passed this is fancy prop to our Domino's pizza and we never used it. I think now is the time to use it. So let's do that. Wanna copy this? And I'm gonna say it's fancy. So whenever this is true, I'm gonna say, um, whenever this is true, I'm gonna sell two pizzas. If this is not true, right? If it's not true, I'm gonna sell only only one pizza. Beautiful. Now let's also look here. Need to get that variable from props. So let's do that. And instead of passing one, we just need to pass this. And maybe just for representation purpose, it doesn't have to doesn't have to be this way. And as I said, there are multiple ways of doing one thing and you can do whichever way you like so i i also sent this is fancy 
to self is a and let's get that here is fancy equals to props dot is fancy and here we're gonna say if is fancy is true I'm gonna say I I am a fancy selling component and in case is fancy is not true hi I am a you know a regular selling component oh my god um let's create br so that we are able to see things so we have six visa available we have five visa available bike one visa I am from selling visa hi I'm a fancy selling component hold on a second there's something wrong they both cannot be fancy right hmm. this okay perfect it seems like we were not sending the data with the with the variable so now this is a fancy selling and this is a regular one so regular one as you remember only sell one pizza at a time the fancy one sells two pizzas perfect i think we want to stop here and um, as promised I, we have covered all our learning objectives i hope you enjoyed this video and yeah i'm gonna see you in the next one until then cheers before you move to the next video can i please request you to like this video and subscribe the channel it will mean a world to me thank you